Way back in the 70s, my mother often talked about how nice it would be to have a grandfather clock. So I bought this kit and made it for her. It wasn't too complicated, so I made duplicate pieces of everything that they sent. Then the moon dial is supposed to tell you the phases of the moon, and then I sort of branched out on my own. Beautiful clock. Thank Beautiful you. Clock. We treasure ours. I enjoy making them. Too close to the edge. I have to have a little repair work. And that's why I work alone, so nobody sees my mistakes. <laughs> I was ordained in 56, and then I was sent to Charles City for three years as an associate pastor, and then I was assigned to Waterloo, Columbus. After a few years, I was appointed principal and stayed there 32 years. The history of clocks is very interesting. They weren't always this complicated. The first ones were just bells that they would ring in the monastery to come pray. And so gradually evolved into what we got now. Seven eighths of an inch. Growing up on the farm, we did all our own carpenter work. Seven eighths and a thirty second. And so I got used to using tools. Parrish always wants to give me Christmas presents. That's why I've got more tools than anybody else. And when I was at Columbus Catholic High School, you don't have a great deal of money. So I did a lot of custodial work. And we had a very nice wood shop there. So I was able to work in the wood shop on my Saturdays and whenever. Does it look square? Close enough that only the spiders will know the difference. Okay. It takes a little over 100 hours to make one. The glass is a bevel glass. That runs a couple hundred dollars. The hardware runs probably $100. The movement itself is close to $1,000. And the wood is probably about a 100 board feet on a clock, but I've been very fortunate. Most of what I've got has been donated to me. Well, I just came in and helped Father. He engineers the whole thing and does all the critical cuts. I've helped him run the router on a few things. Move the key, see how the key works. Okay. We as priests in the Archdiocese of Dubuque were allowed to take retirement at the age of 70. And I was enjoying my work so much, so I stayed on for 18 more years. But now I'm running out of steam. Turn it over. Okay. Quality control. <laughs> yeah, it's quality control. I have always made one for Columbus High School to auction off. And then when I came here, I made one so they could raffle at a fall festival. Last one, no, 10 five, 10 five. And did the same in Roseville when I was assigned there. At 11 or 12 o'clock at night, I'd get a phone call. Could you make another one? And so I would. So for many years, I was making five a year. $11,000, I never could win them in the drawing, so I've got it this way. Thank you, Fran. <laughs> you done good. That did well. 
when my husband was three years in the nursing home, and, and he was a very good comfort for me. Father was. I think you better go back in business with the clocks. <laughs> you think so? Maybe so. It was important to have it because I also have a daughter that will inherit it. And she remembers him really well. Did you get some to eat? Not yet. Well, you better get in there. Kids are still basically very good. But they also need to see achievement. She's one of the best. You gotta trust them. You gotta listen to them. You gotta give them responsibility. Give them a chance to prove themselves. Give them a word of praise when they do it. Got it? You get the clock too? Is that okay? That's great. That's great. It's a good feeling. That's for sure. Look at that. Oh, very nice. You should be able to use that to keep the mice out. <laughs> It's very satisfying to take wood and turn it into something special. Very satisfying. If we can use our talents for more than any selfish reasons, we should be doing them. <laughs>